good. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we'll end up getting. Right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to clear my annotate. Clear all drawings. Great. Oh, uh, they didn't quite get to it. And they didn't get to it either. All right, so you guys, you need to do your jam. Make sure you get your jam board work done also. Um, because that does affect your participation grade. Oh, we haven't done this yet. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the OJive. Yeah, so we haven't done that yet. My bad. So no worries. You haven't done it yet. You're all good. Um, fill in the blanks from the Word Bank. Um, so you guys should have done that. Um, does anybody want to read off what they got? Uh, let's say group one. Let me try to find Yeah, our, our, jam board didn't, our, our jam board didn't have the slide. Yeah, I don't know why. it totally did. No, it's my bad. I didn't put it on there because I didn't think that you guys needed it. So I'm going to pull up our notes and um, have people read off. So the we are right here. So the first one, um, group one, can you read this one, this first one here? Group one? Anyone from group one? Group one? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I put the, the histogram as a graph that displays the data by using vertical bars of various heights to represent the frequencies of the classes. Perfect. Group two, next one. Um, if proportions are used instead of frequencies, the graphs are called relative frequency graphs. Perfect. Next one, group three. Um, I'm sorry, when did you say it was? Polygon? Yes, great. Next, group four. Uh, group four, do, do uh, did next one, group four. Oh, guys? Oh, guys? Yep. Perfect. Uh, go and read all of it. Full sentence? Yeah. Okay. Oh, guys, uh, use the upper class boundary and the cumulative relative frequency. Perfect. Now, that can also be, you can also cross out the word relative. So add in or relative frequencies. It can be either one. It doesn't have to be cumulative. It doesn't have to be relative. It has to be cumulative, but the relative is optional. It be, can be cumulative frequencies or cumulative relative frequencies, either one. Um, group five, read the next, uh, the next two, the next two. Um, for the first one, we said scatter plot. Is what? Read it all. Scatter plot. Scatter plot, a plot of paired X and Y quantitative data with a horizontal X axis and a vertical Y axis used to determine whether there is a relationship between the two variables. Great. And then no. for the next one, uh, we said bar graphs use vertical or horizontal bars whose heights or lengths represent the frequencies of the data. Great. Um, group six, next one. This one here. Or was that group six? That was group five, right? Yeah. So group five. six is uh, Hanan, Kristen, Olivia, Skyler. So I got, or we got radio charts are for a categorical variable with categories arranged from highest frequency to lowest. Great. Group seven, uh, the next one. Uh, you can go. Yeah, you can go. Time series graphs show how a variable changes over a specific period of time, time on horizontal x that each category represents. Great. Time on x, yeah. Yep. Group eight, the next two. Uh, pie chart is a circle divided into sections according to the percentage of the total frequency that each category represents. Uh, finding the angle and degrees of each section, just multiply the percentage by 360. Terrific. And for 
for the next one, we have STEM and leaf plots, represents quantitative data by separating each value into two parts. The STEM, such as the leftmost digit, and the leaf, such as the rightmost digit. Perfect, thank you. And even though we didn't, I should have just crossed that one out. And then group nine, the last two. So group nine is Aaliyah, Jalen, Megan, Ulysses, or, yeah. Um, for, I guess I got the last two then. Yep. Yeah. So what's misleading when, when, when the y-axis starts at some value other than zero? It's the non-zero axis. Great. Thank you. Great. That's the non-zero axis. And then... What's the next one? On that list up top. Uh, I'm guessing you guys can do that part. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, someone from another group want to help them out? Would it be a multi-dimensional picture? Yes. The text and one dimensional data with three dimensional boxes or two even two dimensional boxes. Okay, great. And then lab problem five. Um, let's do that one together. We're going to make an OJI for the data in lab problem two. Um, actually, I'll let you guys do it on your own. So, in your groups, go ahead and do that. OJI for the data in lab problem two. So, along the bottom, if I were doing it for. Oh, did I not show you guys this part yet? I didn't show you these. Oh, no wonder you haven't. Oh, uh, my bad. I'm so sorry. Um, so, <laughs> lab problem five, um, making OJI for the same data in lab problem three. So, for example, I w if I was using your, your, um, your Jamboard from earlier, say I was using this data here, then I would say, okay, um, along the, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out and make a, this here, make another one there, and then I'm going to use the upper limit, uh, sorry, the upper um, boundary. So for mine, I'd be using 14.5, and then you, yours, your numbers are larger, so you have to maybe stagger them a little bit to make them all fit, right, because you guys have something like, you know, 69, 999.5, right, and then you're going to have like 89.999.5, so you're going to have to stagger yours a little bit to get them to all fit, um, 109. Nine 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 point five. Um, but let's just take a look at that line here. So I've got fourteen point five, nineteen point five. Uh, I can't do this. Um, nineteen point five. Twenty four point five. Twenty nine point five. Thirty-four point five. Um, they're out of room. Thirty-nine point five. Forty-four point five. And thirty-nine point five. And then I'm going to put a dot. For every spot where it is. So, how many people? Let's see. Ages of students in classes. Um, all right. So, how many students are 14 and a half or less in age? None of them. How many students are 19 and a half or less? Four of them. Does that make sense? Four of them are 19 and a half or less. So, I might go like this. Let's 
to you. The most first you got to how many you got. I've got 20 total. So this is going to be my 20, and then maybe this will be my 10. Because um, this you have to go up to the grand total at the end. So 19 point four. That'd be four people. This is five. So this would be probably right around here. And then 24 and a half or less. That's 11 people. Right there. 29.5 or younger. 29.5 or younger. That's all of these guys here. So that's 16 of them. Um, 34 and a half or less. So that's all of these guys here. So it's 19 people. Oh, we must have more than no. I guess not. And then this is the same. That's the same. And then we have one more person who's in that for the older group. So then we go like that. And then you just draw a line between them. You notice this one is only anchored in the beginning because once you get to the end, how many people in this class are 50 years old or less? All of them. All 20. How many of them are 100 years old or less? All of them. So now, now what you do, this is always going to be a straight line at 20 going on and on forever after that. So, again, you have cumulative frequencies along the side, or you can use cumulative relative frequencies. I don't care. Either one's fine. Like, you have the cumulative, whichever one you want. And then down here you have your, um, down here you have your, oops, you have your upper boundaries. I should probably label this. This is um, age. And so over here would be frequency. And this doesn't belong at all. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up your rooms, let you guys hop in there and do your lab problem five. Um, I'll just give you guys, uh, right, so they have, you, so the, here's the first class, end of the first class, this is its upper boundary, that's its cumulative frequency. The next class, the next class, the next class, the next class, and the next class. Now you create an, invis an imaginary class in front, right, because you have to anchor it in front. Not in back, but in front you have to anchor it. What's the class in front? Well, it should end with an upper boundary of 69999.5. What's the frequency of that imaginary class in front? Zero. So this is perfect. Right, these are the classes that you have, the upper boundaries and the classes that you have. And then you have to make an imaginary class in front that has a frequency of zero. So that would be the upper, upper boundary for that, that class there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and take a look at misleading graphs. Sorry, group nine. I had you guys answer these when we hadn't gone over them yet. Um, so. <laughs> What is wrong with this uh, graph? Everyone take a look at it and take 15 seconds and try to decide what you think is wrong with the graph. Everyone look at it. Okay, any um, suggestions? What's wrong? You can't really tell um, the specific, um, the, uh, the exact number and the, the, Oh, why? Yeah, it's a little bit hard. Let me ask you this. If you were Jared or Alexi and you saw this graph, would you be bummed about your score? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it looks like you got a third of what, you look like you're a third of what Danielle has, right? You are not doing well. But if you look at it, Jared and Alexi scored 96, Danielle scored 97. That's great. That's what we call a non-zero axis. It's when it's misleading because the y-axis in particular um, start do not start at zero. X-axis is not as big a deal, but the y-axis should always start at zero. Um, so here you see it starts at 30, so it looks like these guys are really far apart, but really they're not that far apart at all. It's that non-zero axis and a lot of news, be aware of that. Fox News does it all the freaking time. Like all the time. 
and other news programs are starting to do it as well, which really just sucks. It's just wrong. Um, it's misleading. What's wrong with this graph? Any ideas? Yep, so that's one thing, is that it doesn't label the axis, so you can't even tell if the axis is correct or not. Um, let's assume that it started at zero. If we assume it started at zero, then what's wrong with it? What is it going by? Yeah, so if you sort of look at it like this, these two, because of the weird warp perspective, these two are really about the same height. All right, but this one looks a lot bigger than that one. They, and magazines will do stuff like that. They'll kind of, you know, they'll try to do some weird graphic like that to make it, you know, seem like it looks like this is a lot bigger than that one. Um, this, is a, this is another similar problem. Look at this big one here and look at this small one here. How much bigger do you think advanced degrees make than no high school diplomas based upon this graph? You think they make... It's got to be at least 25 times bigger, right? At least. Um, when in fact it's only, it's less than four times larger. So it, 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 if you show one dimensional data in three dimensions, it looks like it's way bigger than it should be. It should be like this. Here's your line. It should be like this. And then it wouldn't be such a big deal. Right? Then this was how it, they should be graphing it. Of course, they're not. Something like that. Right? So then it's not as big of a, of a difference. But they do it in four dimensions, like the, three dimensions like this, and it makes it look a lot larger than it is. But, like, doesn't this example kind of, like, make more sense than like the other ones where they're kind of skewed based on perception. It's like this one again, kind of like a general idea. Yeah, this, of, like, this is more common. I mean, both of them are not are bad uses of, of displaying data. Um, you know, this is, I think, more more commonly a, a problem than the other one. Um, but yeah, they're both, they're both not good because they're both a little confusing. Um, Carla, go ahead and read for me. Probability. Um, probability can be defined as. Sorry. Uh, this is in your notes, guys. By the way, you should be taking notes. This is you should be writing something down here. Probability can be defined as the chance of an event occurring can be used to quantify what the odds are that a specific event will occur. Seventy-five percent chance of snow. One in 164,000 That's okay. Just some large number. That's okay. Keep going. It's a winning lottery. Half chance of getting heads on a point. Right. So we're all pretty familiar with these sort of ideas. You know, this you know, we've, we've dealt with probability before. Um, you should be filling stuff here, by the way. Just a heads up. Um, sample spaces and probability. Um, how about? Uh, Ahara, uh, Mary, uh, Ahara, is it Miriam? David W., that's fine. Uh, probability is a chance. Experiment, probably experiment. A probability experiment is a chance process that leads to a defined results called Not probability is the result of a single trial of probability experiment has Great. So again, you guys should be filling in your notes because you may be turning those in today. Um, Anon, can you read the next one? A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. Do you want me to read the example? Um, yeah. Okay. Experiment. Toss a coin. Sample space. Head tail. Um, roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six. Answer a true or false. True or false. Um, toss two coins. H, H. Oh, yeah, I'll do that one. So, yeah, if I toss two coins, I could get heads, heads. 
or I can get heads and tails, or I can get tails and heads, which is different, or I can get tails and tails. So again, sample space is a list, it's just a list. It's a list of all possible outcomes that you could get when you do a probability experiment. For example, here's one for rolling a dice. I roll a dice, and I roll another dice, I roll two. So dice one could be one, two, three, four, five, six. So say I rolled a four on the first dice. On the second dice, I could roll a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, or a six. So this is sort of that row, if I roll a four on the first dice, these are the possible outcomes for my second dice. Die. Singular dice is die. Um, could also use um, a tree, tree diagram to find, find the sample space. We're going to be doing a lot of tree diagrams so we get used to them. Pay attention, this is important. You're going to be needing to know how to do these over the next month. Um, and on the final. It's going to come up again on the final. So we need to find the sample space, in other words, all possible outcomes for the gender of children if a family has three kids. So the first child, what could happen with the first child? It could be what? Help me out. Boy or girl. Boy or girl. Great. So it could be a boy or a girl. And then the second child, what's up with that? How can I help you? It could be a boy or a girl. Boy or girl. Right? Or if I got a girl first, I could on the second child I could have a boy or a girl. So this follows a kind of a trail. Think about like a story. We start off here and then we have a boy. And what happens next? Oh, and then we have a girl, or something like that. So this is a story. Please note, so this is my told, these are all the possible outcomes, that these guys aren't floating out in space. They're connected to this spot here. I, you can't, it's a tree, so you can't get here without being connected there, without being connected there, without being connected to the, to the trunk down here. You have to, these all have to be connected to each other. So here, um, first a boy, then a girl, then a boy. That's how we got here. Boy, then girl, then boy. Down here, how did I get here? You can kind of look backwards and say, okay, I got here from a girl last, a boy before that, and a girl before that. So girl, boy, girl. That's how I got to this spot here. So again, it's like a story. You follow your way path along these, um, through this tree to figure out what all the different possible outcomes are. And here's a list of every possible outcome. Um, so these are them. I have a question for you guys now. Oh, no, we don't. Um, we have, um, oh, so you should be drawing this in. So everybody draw, draw, draw this into your example, right? Draw it, physically draw it. Okay, let me fix that. I'm getting better at this. Okay. So you guys all have this in? No, not quite yet. Colleen, did you finish drawing yours? Give me a thumbs up, kid. Okay. So you're done. Nicole, you're still working on it? No, you're done? Okay, so everybody's done. All right. Um, perfect. An event is a specific outcome or set of outcomes. So, example, who's ever, who's ever flown an airplane? Right, and they say, in the event of an emergency, right, that means that the outcome is that we might crash. Right, that's what they mean. It's, it's an event, right? That, that's, and the specific outcomes are potential crash. So that's what an event is, a specific outcome or set of outcomes. Next, so that's this, so that is this, that was this question right here. So now we're moving down a little bit lower, below, the, below where you drew in, and we're down to this part down here. 
probability of an event occurring when all events are equally likely. It's the number of ways the event can occur divided by the total number of possible outcomes. I like to shorthand it as number of successes over number of outcomes. That's what you should be writing right in here in the space right here. Number of successes over number of outcomes. All right, so let's take a look at these two examples down here. What's the probability of getting a three when rolling a die? A die, actually, so it should be one die. It's really a die. Singular die. Dice. Um, that means one dice. Okay, so if you guys aren't sure, let me show you a dice, a die. So here is a die. Um, it has six sides. Right, here's three of them. Here's three other ones. It has one through six on it. Good. All sides are equally likely to come up. All right, so my question to you guys is, what's the probability that when I roll this die, I get a three? I get this out of all these possible things. What is it? Yeah. What did you guys say? One out of six, exactly. One out of six. Because one success, number of successes, there's one three out of total possible outcomes, six possible outcomes. Now, I have a bag. It has four blue mar five blue marbles, three red marbles, four green marbles. What's the probability of drawing a red marble? How many success successes do I have? Twelve. So here, this is the probability of red. So, pro so first of all, probabilities are going to be this capital P, a big capital P, and the parentheses. So like here, it's probability of rolling a three. So the probability you're trying to find is what's inside. The probability itself is this big capital P. So when you ever see a big capital P and parentheses, that means probability of rolling a three. Here's probability of red. All right, I'm, re I'm meeting you, wherever you are. Okay. Um, so how many successes do I have? You guys said three, because we have three red marbles. Out of how many? You can unmute yourself if you want. That's fine. Twelve out of twelve. Perfect. Three out of twelve. You can leave it as three out of twelve. I am totally okay with that. If you want to simplify that to one-fourth, I'm okay with that. If you want to make that 25%, that's fine as well. Um, generally speaking, I like fractions better because you never have to round. Like one sixth would become like 0.186666, right? And you gotta round at some point. So fra fractions you you never have to round, which is why I kind of like this better. All right. So now, oops. Let me ask you guys this question. Family has three children. Find the probability that exactly two of the three are girls. Here's our sample space we found earlier. So I'm not saying I'm not saying um, at least two. I'm saying exactly two out of the three. So everybody, private chat to me your answer. Private chat it. It's probably finding that exactly two of them are girls. We're from two people, three people, four people. Half of them are correct. Seven, eight, nine. A little less than half are correct. Seven, twelve. So if you don't chat to me in the next ten seconds, you will lose a point from your participation. I need an answer from you within seven seconds. Answer this question. Okay. All right. No more. We are closed for answers. No more answers. Um, the answer is, let's see, let's take a look. Um, which of these, so exactly two girls. Here's my sample space. Right? Does this have exactly two girls? Boy, boy, boy. Is that exactly two girls? No. no. How about this one? Boy, boy, girl. 
No, no. How about this one? Boy, girl, boy. No, no, that's not exactly two girls. That's only one girl. How about this one? Girl, boy, boy? No. 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 Girl, 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 exactly two. No. Yes. No, this oh. is exact. It's oh. at least two. We want exactly two. How about this one? Girl, girl, boy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Girl, uh. girl, then boy. That's two girls. Girl, boy, girl. Yes. Yes. Boy, girl, girl. Do I have at least two girls? If I have a boy, then a girl, then a girl. Yeah. Yeah. So three successes out of eight possible outcomes. That is your answer. Questions? You guys waking up now? No. No? <laughs> okay. Here it is, a little bit prettier. Finding probabilities. All right, I need everybody to take uh, 30 seconds, try to figure these out. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, and um, chat me your answers to these. 30 seconds. Maybe a minute. I'll give you guys a minute. I have most of these. Um, so probably rule A, 4 is 1 6th. Right, because one, four out of six possible. Probably you get a, a vowel is there's five vowels out of 26. What about Y? I said these ones. I, 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 I spelled them out. Um, taking a J month, there are three J months out of, the, out of 12 months total. Taking a weekday, how many weekdays are there? Five out of... Seven. Okay, good. Um, Professor Young. Yes. Um, if we're doing like these like probabilities probabilities things, um, mm -hmm. is what if we simplify it? Would that be okay or no? Um, my math lab is going to ask for something very specific. Um, I'm okay with either. Uh, my math lab is going to ask you for it. It's going to say give me a give me a simplified. They're going to be picky. It's going to say give me a simplified fraction. So they wouldn't take three twelfths. They only want one fourth. Um, or it might say, give me a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth or hundredth or something like that. So it'll give you, it'll it'll tell you, it'll give you very specific things like three decimal places or something like that. It it will. It, um, I'm fine with either. I don't care. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So now you guys have a jam board. It's gonna be quick. Like literally a, so you have this Jamboard, and you also have, do that, and then right after that, do this next page here. So I'm going to give you guys five minutes to do those. It's, we've got to move quick because we are totally behind, guys. So let me try to open the breakout rooms. Off in there, the next two pages. Draw your probability, probabil probability tree. Find these two probabilities. I have this down pretty well. Oops. Let me skip that part. Uh, all right. So here, heads, tails, heads, tails. Here the, here's the sample space. Probability of getting two tails, one out of four. Probably getting, probably getting one head and one tails in any order, two out of four. That's great. Now, probably rather pick a black one or a chocolate one. So black, there's six black labs. Eight chocolate labs, so six plus eight, 14 out of 20. Yellow female, there's just two that are females that are yellow. There's two yellow females out of 20. And then rather than big female, eight out of 20, and male and female, 20 out of 20. That's perfect. Now we have some questions about black one or female. So you might want to say, okay, black one, there's six. Female, there's eight. So you might be tempted to, to do this. 6 plus 8. But here's the deal. You've got you've got your 6. You have your 8. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. 
but this three is getting counted in both the eight and the six. It's getting double counted. So you have to subtract off one of them because you only want to be counted once. So you have to subtract off three. So then you end up with uh, over 20. Um, so you end up with Uh, 11. 11. So this would end up being 11 out of 20. I should go to somebody else's board, so I'm not bothering you guys. Who's not here? Because three, they're gone. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the thing about the ors. When you have something that conflicts, you can take the male or yellow, so yellow, six, male 12, but again, same issue. This one is being counted in the yellows total and in the male total, so it's being counted twice. So 6 plus 12 minus 4. So you have to do that out of 20. The last one um, we, t we should talk about is given. So given works like this. Given means I am giving you information. This is definitely 100% happened. So given it's black, that means that you know it's a black puppy. You know it's not yellow, it's not chocolate, it's one of the black puppies. So now you know there's only six puppies that are possible. What's the probability it's male? Three males out of six. Does that make sense for folks? Similarly, the next one, probability it's male given, so usually a lot of times we're at the given second, so whichever one is given, usually it's second, given it's chocolate. So that means that you know it's chocolate. What's the probability it's male? Five males out of eight. So you guys need to do the last four problems. Um, you can either do them on your own. That's part of the stuff you're turning in today for our classwork, page 8. Page 8 plus your quiz. You can either do it on your own or I'll open up the rooms again if you want to do it with your group. You can do it with them um, to kind of make sure you've got it before you head out. It's up to you. Or you, just, you can just head out now if you, if you like, if you feel like you've got it and you're ready just to, to um, head out and just do it. But if you, you know, have a couple minutes just, and you want to double check with your neighbors and make sure you guys are all on board. All right, have a good couple of days. See you later. Hey, Ms. Shannon, do you have a question about the Excel thing before I leave? Okay.